Sir, let's just focus on one verse. Romans says... <laughs> which one? Let's, how about... Let's just which, focus on verse? one. That God which, says that he's storing no. up punishment for those who refuse to repent. And, That's easy. What do you do What do you do you with that verse, sir? What do you do with all the judgment verses? That Jesus said he's going to say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. How do you as an emergent deal with those verses? I think that they have all to do with people being uh, eliminated from what God is doing in the world. So when judgment comes, the judgment verses all have to do with what judgment is. And what the Bible says judgment is, is to karem in the Old Testament, in the Hebrew. The karem is to, uh, is to replace that which is not in agreement with God with that which is in agreement with God. This is the same notion as the, 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 the fire that purifies. Judgment is when God recreates the world in the way that it ought to be. The purpose of judgment is to make the world the way that it ought to be. So from Genesis all the way through Revelation, the finalization of judgment is the recreation of the heavens and the earth. Okay, well, now let's say that we agree That's on what that. That's what it is. Who's going to, who's going to be in, the, in that nice place? A good Buddhist and a good no, Muslim? See, now, now, now again, you've created this, mm-hmm. this, no, this idea, which apparently you're, you're stuck with here, yeah. that there are places. Well, you just described it, sir. You said no, he's going to recreate a heaven and earth. No, I didn't just describe another place. Oh. What is it, then? It's the recreation of all that exists. Is it a real play? Is it a real thing? Here we go again. I mean, now I'm starting to worry that maybe what you're you're articulating here is a platonic (laughs) understanding of the cosmos. Are we we here? Do we exist? That really what you're into here is some kind of a... Of, of a dualistic, platonic understanding of the cosmos. I'm beginning to think that maybe you're going to suggest next that God is distant and removed from the earth. Mm, in a sense, yes. In a sense, no. But never, nevertheless, well, because, sir, are we because, Yeah, that would be consistent with this platonic understanding am I heaven real? is this other place. Doug, am I real? Do I exist? Well, I think so. I've only heard your voice. Okay, well, that, that's every good. Okay, good. So we're, we're here. This is actual. This is stuff. We, ex- we exist on this planet, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, so when God creates a new heaven and a new earth, what is that going to be if it's not an actual place? It's a recreated heaven and earth. Okay, fine. Who's going to be there? There? Oh, See, boy. Here, oh boy, here we go again. This is just not working. I it? agree. <laughs> it's unbelievable. See, I have a very difficult time working with the dualistic plat- platonist like yourself because I have to be taken back and to remind myself that rather than following the Jesus narrative, I have to go into Plato and Socrates' understanding of the cosmos so they can end up with a heaven in one place, in one sphere, and functioning by one set of rules. So heaven, let me, then let me, then let me earth, try to understand you, earth, sir. In another sphere. Then let me try to understand your to narrative. Is, is heaven and hell together? Yeah, I agree it's unbelievable, sir. You're right. Is heaven and hell... Uh, Okay, so what is it exactly? <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I so you create this context, right? You create this structure. Yes, because and then Jesus you ask said about I it as a where and a place, place and then okay, you say well, to me, I, I, "Would I, you please I, define for me what it is?" Sir, I mean, when, if, you, if you're unclear about it, then maybe you ought to. I mean, you could go look at what Plato or Dante's understanding of hell is. Because yeah, well, I don't. I don't you yeah, say, you know, I'm I'm not doing that to you, sir. I'm I'm not doing that to you with those kind of reckless characterizations. But nevertheless, would yes, you would well, you preach at the funeral of a Muslim? Pastor, would you preach at the funeral of a Muslim? Would I preach at the funeral of a Muslim? Yes, sir. I have never been asked to preach Let's at say the funeral you were. of a Muslim. Let's say you uh, were. Well, if, if I have a Muslim friend, if one of my Muslim friends were to die, and they asked me to, to talk at their funeral, mm-hmm. of course I would. And, and what hope would you offer their Muslim family? Oh, I'd offer them the, same, the, the, the hope that I offer everybody, and that's reconciliation with God that comes through... Jesus Christ. All right, sir. Now, now you recognize, and, and I'm not going to sling this around recklessly, but if I understand if I understand you correctly, what you're presenting is outside of Orthodox historic Christianity. You do realize that, correct? No. What you're suggesting in this phone conversation is outside the bounds of Orthodox All Christianity right. because it's it's riddled with Platonism and it's riddled with a cosmology that would never be acceptable to to uh, to Christians through the ages, like Luther. And Calvin and Spurgeon and Whitfield and Moody, those guys wouldn't agree with me. They'd agree with you? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can't tell you everything that you believe about things, but if they had to listen to this conversation, I think they'd be I, terrified. I think they'd be terrified, too, sir. Doug Paget of SullivansPorch.com. Oh, we'll let everybody decide. Did you understand what just happened here? 
This is Way of the Master Radio. We don't say turn or burn, but we think it. The Way of the Master Radio with Kirk Cameron, Ray Comfort, and Todd Frio. Now available in THX. Have a conversation. <laughs> Yikes. Are you supposed to do that? This is Way of the Master Radio. Your call's welcome at one eight seven seven law grace If you'd like to comment on the guest who could only stick around for one segment, his name is Doug Paget. Solomonsporch.com, The Emergent Movement, TheEmergentVillage.com. That's another website that he'd like you to know about. Our phone number here is one eight seven seven law grace Here is what I think just happened, if you are just joining us. Tried to be specific with words with Doug Paget, and this is where I think part of the conversation got off track, but I'm not sure. Let's call it the 1500s. There was a revolution that happened inside of Christianity. We're going to speak mostly about Western Christianity in this context because we're, we'll, we'll eliminate for the time being the Eastern Orthodox Church. But inside of the Western Catholic Church, there was a reformation that happened. A group of men arose who said, hold it, we're off on justification by faith alone and we've got to get this fixed because it is by grace we are saved. The just shall live by faith. It is a free gift of God, not of works, so that nobody can boast. And they would hearken back to some earlier Christians in the 2nd, 3rd, 4th centuries and say, look, look at what those early fathers said. And we veered away from them. We've moved away. And they were very fast to cite and quote the early church fathers and say, see, they would support what we say. Now, after, let's call it 4th century, give or take 5th century, the church started to wander away from some of those core doctrines of the early church fathers. The reformers in the 15th century called the church back to say, hey, we've moved away, and I can show you that we have, because here's what the early church fathers said. Now, they wanted to claim the early church fathers as supporters of what they were doing with the Protestant Reformation. And I think what just happened is Doug Paget was trying to suggest that I would be, I'm a, I'm a very historical, orthodox sort of a Protestant fellow. I think that he would say that the early church disagreed with me because he's trying to go back and cite certain teachings of I don't know who for sure to say that I'm, an, I'm out of alignment. I'm out of whack. And you will have to decide who's got this right and who's got this wrong. Not Doug Padgett or Todd. But what does the Bible teach about this, and what has history taught us as far as orthodoxy? I would suggest to you the early church fathers, as a whole, had it right, the doctrine of justification by faith. And then they wandered away. The Protestant Reformation called it back. And now we are wandering away again, thanks to the emergent movement, redefining justification by faith alone, through grace alone, through Jesus Christ alone, revealed in Scripture alone, for the glory of God alone. And so when I brought up to him, would the early church fathers like, and we're still early for us, like Luther and Calvin and Zwingli or Wesley, agree with Doug Padgett and his approach or mine? I think that's where the conversation actually hit the brakes. Because the reality is, what I just shared with you was a decent representation of what those fathers would say. And they would say to you, if they were here, they would say, we're simply teaching what the really early church, and the really early church would say, we're just showing you what Scripture said. Bottom line, what does Scripture teach? Interesting, while we were talking, somebody, I don't know who called in these verses, apparently the big thing with Doug is defining that heaven is a place and that hell is a place. So somebody called in with verse Isaiah 14, 12 through 13. Few will be left alive when I have finished my work. People will be as scarce as gold, more rare than the gold of Ophir. For I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move from its place. I, the Lord Almighty, will show my fury and fierce anger. I... 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 Sir, you're not completing words, sir. His big argument is... is, is, uh, uh, Platonism, that he, that he thinks that we're just Platonists, and I gotta, well, we're not. There's a, there's a lot about Platonism to be recommended and a lot of it to be rejected. I think what he was trying to, to get at is we need to redefine what here is. We're here, but heaven won't be here. Heaven will be something else. 
and his vague language about who's going to be there, and I think as close as we got, and this is probably the most important point, he would preach at the funeral of a Muslim, and God is going to deal with the Muslim the same way that he deals with everybody else. i got to tell you, that's just as far away from biblical Christianity as you're going to get. And that, by looking at the scripture, couldn't be more clear. God is going to judge those who die in their sins without Jesus Christ differently than he judges Christians. Because Christians don't get judged for their sins. But unbelievers do. And where this is going, and what it smelled like to me from Doug Paget, although it's slipperier than an eel, i got to tell you that much, is universalism. If that wasn't universalism, or as close to it as you're going to get, I don't know what is. One eight seven seven law grace if and you want to comment. What a shame. Such a beautiful gospel. Deteriorated into that gobbledygook we just heard.